In this brief video, we give a short introduction to the Ackermann function, which is important um, from a foundational point of view and also um, because it uh, kind of introduces us to the growth behavior of uh, functions on natural numbers. So the Ackermann function arose as an example of uh, the search for uh, a computable function, so a function which is intuitively computable, that is not primitive recursive. And um, Ackermann, who was a student of Hilbert, and in the late twenties gave a following example. So it's a it's a binary function. So a of zero y is y plus one. A of x plus one zero is just a of x comma one. And now here we have a double recursion. So a of x plus 1, y plus 1 is a of x of a of x plus 1, comma, y. It may not be immediately clear that this recursion um, here actually gives us some uh, a computable function. In particular, when we try to unravel this right, and compute this value by using this recursion property here that we actually uh, terminate after finitely many steps. But you can see that if you apply a recursion step, you either um, x, so x plus 1 goes down to x, or x plus 1 here stays the same, but then y goes down. So in particular, you always go down in the lexicographic ordering, right? And that's a well ordering on the pairs, on, on the set of finite pairs. And uh, hence, after finitely many steps, you must have reached uh, the uh, uh, part where you have a well-defined uh, expression here or number. So showing that this is uh, actually formally computable in the sense of Turing computable computation or other uh, computational um, frameworks is uh, quite a little bit harder. And we will uh, discuss this uh, later as an implication, for example, of the um, recursion theorem. For now, we want to focus on an aspect of the Ackermann function. So assuming that this is an informally computable function, right, um, that it is actually not primitive recursive. Um, you see here, so this definition uses a double recursion, the definition of primitive recursion only had a simple um, recursion right in the second component. So why is it not possible to express this uh, maybe as a um, uh, more elaborate, uh, simple um, uh, recursion? The reason is uh, the growth behavior of this function uh, that we'll describe on the next slide. So let's assume, let's fix f sub n, so fix the first component of the Ackermann function, right, and look at it as a, a unary function in the second component. And then you should, you should try that for the first few values, and you will see that the first function, um, so the first component function is m plus 1, the second component function is m plus 2, um, then f sub 2 is uh, approximately 2m, oh, it's off by a little bit, uh, and then the sec the third, f sub 3, is 2 to the m. f sub 4, then, is a tower of the exponent 2 to the 2 to the 2, and so on, m times. So what you see is that the in the, the Ackermann function essentially iterates the um, basic operation. So it iterates plus to times, then it iterates times to expo exponential, then it iterates passing from f3 to f4, it iterates exponentiation, and so on. You can also show that every function fn is actually primitive recursive. So if we fix n, we get a primitive recursive unary function. But you can also observe that now in the first component, if we fix the second component and uh, look at the first component, we get an extremely fast or growing function. The important fact now about this hierarchy of functions or the sequence of functions fn that we can obtain by fixing the first component of the um, 
Ackermann function is that growth wise, they dominate, they're able to dominate any primitive recursive function. Right? So here's the theorem. If f is primitive recursive, then there exists a level n such that this um, function f sub n, right, obtained from the Ackermann function, applied to the maximum of the arguments here, dominates our function f. And informally, the reason behind this is, of course, that a primitive recursive function can apply recursion at most a finite number of times, right? Because it needs to have a fixed primitive recursive definition. So each primitive recursion um, application of primitive recursion can iterate um, the previous one or the previous uh, uh, computational function such as uh, plus or times one more time and hence we can get up in this hierarchy of the um, we can climb in this hierarchy of fn functions to at most a finite level right? so formally you you show this by induction namely that if you have a function that is of a certain level uh, or a couple of functions that are of a certain level and then you apply uh, the primitive recursion theorem uh, to these two functions obtain a new function then this function will be bounded um, by um, uh, the next level of the fn hierarchy and now of course if you form the diagonal Ackermann function, so dn, and you let this be a of nn, then you will get a, a function whose growth behavior cannot be captured by any of those fixed levels fn. And therefore, the Ackermann function itself uh, will not be primitive recursive.